For the last three years, between recording segments of the D6 generation, Russ, Craig, and Rafe have had various conversations that have spanned the interests of gamerdom worldwide. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. All right, I would like to welcome you all and Russ and Craig to my Ooh. little reader's room. Yay. We're Ooh. not in dunks tonight. We're not in dunks. Uh, no, no. This is a uh, man's lounge. We've got Ooh, some... Um, man club. But everybody's welcome. Okay. It's a man's lounge, but please, everybody, come on in. Um, it just <laughs> might stink a little. It's got leather wingback chairs. Oh, nice. Ooh, very nice. And um, they still serve coffee. Um, I say, but, can I all smoke a pipe? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, exactly. Rafe, Rafe, I spilled my Dunks coffee. I brought it on your leather chair. Sorry, that's, that's okay. okay. I sprayed them all with that um, that Scotch stain guard. remover, Scotch guard, or Scotch, guard. Scotch guard stuff. That's right. Scotch guard, right? Yep. I took yep. care. I've got Rafe's back here, <laughs> and just to let you know, it's fake leather. Oh, good. So, <laughs> all right. So, put your feet up on the sheepskin. Does it have it? those little like bronze studs in it from the seventies, yes. like all furniture from oh, the seventies? Yeah. Right there, you go. yes, yes. And um, a few of them are missing. They've like fallen out. Uh, of course, no, well, of course. course, they just pop yeah. right out when they you pop put right a out. knife in there, nice. and they're right where your fingers are. So when you're talking, you can kind of poke poke the leather Ooh, back. Very in. nice. I like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent. I feel That's right set. at home. I think I want okay. a bean bag. Oh, oh and over the lamps are like red scarves and stuff. And green and stuff like that. Well, now that's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. I think you're going to start a fire. <laughs> that's not Ooh. like any man cave. Ooh, and Craig, and behind us is, is the ultramarine. Did you sprinkle perfume on the bulbs, too? What's going <laughs> no, on? No, I didn't do that. But oh, behind okay. us is the chapter banner. Can you banner put the candles the out? Because this is getting kind of crazy. Space Wolf chapter banner is behind us. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good. okay there you go. Yeah? It's like That'll a lot. for the weird tissue thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but welcome to uh, TLC episode Let's number reading 12. Room. Number 12. Number Woo, 12. Number 12. And we're going to do our first own three-person book club review. Yay. And what's exciting about this is that Craig has done a bunch of these in the in his Do You Ever Notices? And I don't know, Russ, have you ever talked about any books in What's in the News? Not just in um, Achievements in Gaming we talk about it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, in Achievements in right. Gaming. And um, uh, so I'm excited that the three of us get to talk. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is A Wise Man's Fear by the author Patrick Rothfuss, which is, well, he's a new author to me, and I, I kind of did a little research on him, and we'll get to that to the now, end. Now, are we only talking about the first book, or are we going to talk about the second book, too? No, this is the second book. Well, actually, that yeah, okay, that's then, the second book. Okay, good. The second book is The Wise Man's Fear. Right. The yes, first book was called not. The Name of the Wind. Right. right. Now, Craig... And it's, the, gonna, yes, sir. it's the King saying, Killer... It's, not it's the King Killer Chronicle, right? The King uh, the Killer you know what? I don't, I don't, Chronicles, yes. yes. Let me look. Yes, it is. Yes, the King Chronicle. The King Killer Chronicle. Right. Yep. Yep. Day two, actually. Right. Which is kind of interesting. Do you know day why it's called day two? The wise Man's Fear. Yep. Do you know why it's called day two? Yes. Hey, hey, this is my part. <laughs> but don't go there <laughs> stay yet. Stay off my part. You stay off my leather-bound S- okay. chair. Okay. Sh- should we talk about spoilers before we get into Yeah, here? I want to talk about spoilers. Right. wants to talk about spoilers. Okay. Let's talk about spoilers. Let's, All right. let's take a moment on spoilers. Let's take a moment on spoilers. I'm, I'm intrigued I've, by I've this. spoiled this chair with a large milk spill. I, oh, gross. <laughs> Sorry. The first half of that sentence started out really scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm spoilers. getting old. I can't, I can't be responsible if it comes out of my bottom. <laughs> God. You know, it, at my father's <laughs> retirement party, one of the guys made a toast and said, at our age, there's three things you can't trust. The government, a woman, and a fart. <laughs> You know, now, I, I would like to point out that Rafe and I are not at that age. Yet, I am. Apparently, Russ is. I, I am at that age. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm realizing? Go to the bathroom, Craig? please wait. <laughs> what? You know what I'm realizing, Craig? Russ, are you having fun? Uh, yes, but I ruined the chair. It is fun, isn't it, Russ? I ruined the chair. Yes, because you know what? I'm getting very frustrated with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to lead a segment, damn it. It is. He's interrupting me with stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Rafe, Rafe, I don't know what that's like at all. <laughs> wow. But it is fun, isn't it, Russ? It is pretty fun. The lost chapter 12. <laughs> Russ's gonna, revenge. Gra- yeah. I didn't even do anything. I just had a problem with my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't think we'd break down so soon into the episode. All right. I'm going to be like, Russ, all right. 
<laughs> so, spoilers. <laughs> Bullet points. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, I was fascinated by this because I had a friend of mine in law school who he was so into not knowing anything about the movie. He didn't want to know whether people liked it, didn't like it or anything. I thought I wanted to talk about this because I want to warn people if we're going to have spoilers. So, Craig, what yes. is a spoiler to you? Well, I think a spoiler to me and everyone else and on probably the planet most except people. that lawyer friend of yours. Yeah, exactly is uh, when you give away some element of the plot or the theme or, or, the, uh, or character motivation or something that gets revealed in the movie that has some kind of an emotional impact, whether it's really funny or really sad or really dramatic, and you reveal it in your review or in your discussions to people who have not yet seen the movie or read the book and yep. and if you think telling you that I like something is a spoiler, then I really think you need to dig deep down back into that rock under which you live and stay there until you've seen every movie and read every book and seen every view the world has to offer. And yeah. then come out and talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Because my buddy of mine, like I said, I mean, he didn't even want to know about anything about it at all. And And I asked him about that once and he was like, well, it's because in my mind, if like if I hear you say – uh, episode three is the best Star Wars ever. He will create in his mind something that cannot even be met on the screen. Right. And then well, I understand it. not wanting to talk to people before you go see it, but that's not a spoiler. Right? Oh, you you call that something different, or or not you, but pe- normal people would call that something different. I don't know, Russ. Is that a spo- do, you, do you think you can classify? Uh, I liked that movie as a spoiler. I think I no. I think a spoiler is more of a plot point reveal. Right. Even I think if, spoiler yeah. is a specific term with an actual yeah. meaning. I, yeah, I think okay. now I think you can you can argue that any plot point reveal is a spoiler, right. uh, no matter how early it is. So I like to anytime we're going to be talking about plot at all, I usually like to say spoiler alert even if i'm not sure because that way people know people would rather hear spoiler alert and then say where the hell was the spoiler as opposed to not hear spoiler alert and be dear god he just told me luke was his you know son what the hell you know so that that's the kind of thing like well, saying my luke, favorite thing yeah. is like oh uh blah 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 blah. don't worry that happens in the first five minutes right. well, well it right. was still something that i wasn't going to know about till i saw it right i think the mm-hmm. only thing you can get away with is like maybe anything shown in the previews might be considered a non-spoiler, but some mm-hmm. people are even religious about that. They're like, I'm not going to watch anything about this film right. until I see it. So who knows? Yes. See, and that's what's, you're right. That's what's making me call it like a spoiler. If we were in a group of people, he would react that way and be like, la, 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 I don't want to hear. Like, like you would sounds react. Sounds like it was a drama it was a queen is what it sounds but like I, to I me. I think it's safe to well, say there will be spoilers in this, though, right, about this book. I don't well, know I don't, how we can review this book without giving away spoilers. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, there's going to be we're going to talk about plot points and we're going to talk about things that happened to him. Like I'm looking at Rafe's favorite spot here now. You can't say what your favorite spot is without revealing something in the book. I guess you're right. That's a major um, plot point spoiler. I mean, I'm just I originally this did. is going to be a real boring 45 minutes if we don't give away some stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. or discuss it. We, you know, I mean, so, if you haven't, so if you've not read, read Wise Man's yet, Fear, now some people don't mind hearing story and they read it anyway and enjoy it. So here's right. the thing. If you've not read Wise Man's Fear and you don't want to know anything about it, then you need to want to stop and put this away and come back later. <laughs> That's what I'm going <laughs> right? to. Yep. But if you don't mind that or you've already read it and you really want to know what we think about it and kind of join the book club, and maybe in the future we can kind of hint at what the book club's going to be mm-hmm. through Ooh, achievements. Because like we mentioned we're reading. We can have listener feedback. Right. Be like, we're doing the D6G book club. Here's what we're reading. We're going to shoot for a review in like August or something, you know, and tell there people. That'd be kind of fun. You could yeah. read along with us. It's not often that we are all reading the same book, though. No, right. no, but we get it. Like, we're all excited for, you know, Dresden Book 10, that kind of stuff. Oh, that's I'm true. Act- or, um, I'm actually opposite than my buddy in law school. I actually don't mind hearing about a book because, yeah. and I don't mind if people say, oh my God, this is the best part because then when I read it, I can be like, oh yeah, that part was really cool. And so I sometimes dragons. don't even mind. Yeah. Dance with dragons we're all going to read. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there you When's go. that out, Craig? Yeah. What's fall. that? Fall. When's it out? I think it's July 20th, isn't it? Ooh, that's coming up. And when it's I say fall, I mean next 12th. month. <laughs> it might be the 12th actually. Yeah, soon. Okay. So is Dresden. Dresden's next month too. Oh, oh man. I've fallen a little bit behind Big on that. Books. Okay, Craig. Yes. In the style of Craig Gallant. Thank you. Thank you very what much. <laughs> is the backstory, and, and I allow you yeah. in our little refrain here, you can talk about both books. So go ahead. Just what's okay. the backstory between okay. the story? Uh, well, you're going to be <clears throat> the King Killer Chronicles, and none of us know why they call it the King Killer Chronicles. Oh, we know. They've already revealed it in book two. Come on. Now. What? The, what? Did he, he kills a king? You don't know which king. No, I'm just saying, we know he's going to kill a king. 
But, well, you kind of knew that when you read the cover <laughs> of the first book. I'm but just anyway, saying. Now we know why they call him Gate Killer. Thank you, Russ. No problem. Got you back. No, yeah. Notice I threw it to Craig. Right? <laughs> Sorry. The main character. Yes. Who also happens to be the narrator in the very in the very unique storytelling style of the book. Uh, most of the book is is in first person. Right. That's a character named Quoth, yep. or uh, his pseudonym that he, he's sort of in hiding, and his his name is Coat. Coat. Yeah. Uh, uh, his his hiding name. Right. And uh, through the first book, you learn that he's sort of um, the son of a of a gypsy. Mm-hmm. Uh, culture called mm-hmm. the Adama Ru, mm-hmm. and the Adama Ru go all around, and they're not, they're sort of frowned upon. Just the, think 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 of them as your archetypal gypsy. Yeah, gypsy. they're gypsies. Yep. Yeah, and he's a particularly gifted Adama Ru. His his abilities with musical instruments are phenomenal. His abilities with his voice are unbelievable. Um, and and his family is basically the leading family in this one of uh, the most restricted troops. Wandering troops. Yeah. And his dad's the guy in charge of this whole troop. So he's kind of like nobility as far as the Adamaru, although they don't have nobility. And, and also we should say the Adamaru are the lowest on the social ladder compared to everyone else. Right, like gypsies. Right. Exactly. Right. They come into town and everybody looks at them with suspicion. And uh, everybody's yeah. very eager to see them perform. And yay, we're going to get some entertainment. But they don't want you to stick around. But there's rumors right. like they steal children and all those kind of things. Right, right. exactly. Right, they steal um, your goods. Right. And... Gypsies, total gypsy things. Gypsies, there you go. Gypsies. Right. Yep. It's almost uh, as now if his dad. It's, it's as, almost as if the gypsies. As, 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 so bas- basically, the I, I skipped over what I wanted. The, the story structure is very interesting because he's at the beginning of the book. He's in hiding. He's running a tavern, and he's got a, an assistant named Bast that's helping him run the tavern. And there's these weird things that's going on. It's in this out of the way town. Nobody goes there, and there's a mm-hmm. war somewhere. We don't know somewhere. a lot of. Yeah, we don't know a lot of the details, but somewhere there's a war and lots of people are being conscripted. So many young people are gone and the older people are trying to make do the best they can on their farms. And then a bunch of other weird stuff starts happening in these strange and there's not a lot of strange creatures. Right. Uh, it's it's pretty much like, um, you know, like uh, like the mid, the like medieval Earth. There's not a lot medieval right. Europe. There's not. Um, the, 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 the supernatural doesn't really enter into it in the nope. beginning of the book. Nope. And, and then the these farming, weird things, these like, gla- were they glass or metal spiders? I they're I these, they're, I almost thought of them as obsidian. I thought I'm like some yeah, kind of stone. Yeah. 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 They're like weird, like demony spidery things. They show up and they start attacking people. And, uh, and, um, and co- the spiders co- are like, are like so deadly. Like every one of their legs is like razor sharp mm-hmm. and will right. slice you to ribbons. It almost reminds me of the of the bugs, those big bugs in the um, Horus Heresy books that they right. that they fight, yes. but but much smaller. Yes, much much smaller. <laughs> uh, and so uh, so coat goes out and and you you're like oh wow this guy's uh, there's something more than meets the eye here because he kind of borrows a big leather apron and goes out and kicks the crap out of these demons and comes mm-hmm. back and he's like oh we got bad news. And I found this guy, and this guy's name is Chronicler. And he was in the woods being attacked also, and I saved him. And Chronicler's kind of this guy who goes around, and he does um, biographies, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he's like, you know what? I think you're not really Coat the, uh, the, the innkeeper. I think you're Kvoth the king killer. The famous and hero. You're, you know, and like this massive hero, who but at the same time, there's that, something yeah. really dark and sinister about his past that people are afraid of him, and everyone thinks he's dead. Right. And Quoth is like, well, that's silly. Uh, yeah, and why would a hero like me be in this god? Right, exactly. Spot? Why would I be here running this stupid little inn with a bunch of these little podunk farmers that, you know, why would I do that? And Chronicle is like, well, that's interesting. Why don't we make that part of the story? Why don't you tell me why you're here? And Quoth eventually, with Bast's um, uh, urging, encouraging, mm-hmm. eventually says, okay, I, you know, I will tell you my story, and I think the person you think I am doesn't exist, but I will tell you my story and how I ended up where I am, and you'll see how it intersects with the stories that you think are real. Right. And so that's what where Russ was saying that the why why book one is called day one, book two is called day two because Quoth basically says to Chronicler, it will take me three full days to tell my whole story, and then I'll be done, and I'm not going to talk anymore, and that'll be it. And you right. will be the only one who has the whole story. So and I forget does he say and you can't interrupt me and you can't ask questions 
Or does that uh, come out there throughout? Are, there are some that rules, sounds familiar, but, yeah, but I think yeah. it was more like, please don't ask questions. Right. Okay. Because he does ask questions at some sometimes. Yeah. When, during the intermissions, because there are throughout the book, there are intermissions that actually bring you up to speed on what's happening in, in the quote unquote present of the book yeah. also. Yeah. Uh, may- which is really cool. So so he's telling his story in um in the name of the wind, yeah, uh, when you get all this background story with his father and and basically the the core story of who he is and why he does everything is his father, the leader of this big Adamaru gypsy band, is trying to come up with this song about the Chandrian. And the Chandrian are these super mega powerful evil creatures that give demons a bad I mean, they're just like awful, awful, awful. And they nobody knows really what they're all about, but they're they're just evil, 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 evil. And there's there's a couple like uh children's fairy tale. I mean, yep. not fairy tales, like 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 nursery rhymes that that res, that refer to them and every other record of them has been wiped out of existence. Yep. Mm-hmm. So his father has this this passion for trying to dig up all the truth. And unfortunately the Chandrian are real. They find out that he's making this song and they come and they kill the entire Damaru um uh the whole troop. troop. The entire troop kill everybody. And for some and reason both, though was, yeah. was he out hunting? He was, but the weird he's like thing out about fetching it, wood or something. They see him though. They have dialogue and they leave Quoth alive, which we right. don't really understand either yet. That's right. true. Yes. Yeah, he Quoth comes back and stumbles mm-hmm. upon the slaughter. Right. Yeah. And kind of hides and he kind of yeah. witnesses them talking, the Shandrian. Right. There's some think, major yeah, players. I don't think of they the, talk to him directly. No, they don't. He somehow remains hidden. No, they see him. Because the one he hates the most talks to him and and the and the guy in the hood says no, you can't take him now. Or there's some little like dialogue. Mm, that does there. sound familiar. They do see each other, and there's a little dialogue. Okay. Like you're lucky, like because he because he he taunts the boy with how these are your parents, so they died. You know, he kind of taunts them with that. In the oh, that oh, that sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. So they're all dead. Right. And the poor kid is now an orphan, and he eventually finds himself in the town, the big big city of Tarbeen or yep. Tarbeen or whatever. And he lives for three years as a street urchin, urchin, and it's this awful existence where he's constantly being beaten up, and he has to learn how to survive on his own. And he finds the safe places where he can hide in the in the roofs and everything. And yeah, yeah like he just, literally lives like in the eaves of a roof. Yeah, yeah it's cool because it, it just, rains and sleets on him const- You know, when it's, it's a, winter, it's like. a very detailed part of the book, and I really enjoyed that section. I thought that was really cool how he told that part of the story and made it interesting. Yeah, really absolutely, cool. and you really felt for him too. Yeah. Well, because there's this because really, at that point, yeah. I mean, he's he. The author, uh, Patrick Rothfuss, does a great job with character. Yeah, he you really, does. really care about what's going on with these characters. Well, you care about him and you care about what he cares about. So what happens is you really understand his attachment to his loot. And so yeah. when he first gets into the city and he loses his loot like in like, you know. Oh, like, all right. Like, Russ, yeah. you know. that's perfect. I re- that, that nails one of the things I just loved about this book that I couldn't yeah. put my finger on that you just did. You care what Kavoth cares about. Right. Yeah. Yes. And that's, yes. and that's a really rare uh, – a lot of authors have trouble with that. And I think he does a really good job of imbuing – like another one of my favorite parts of the book, and it's going to like a weird part. I love the part of the book where he's in the woods alone after his parents die. Mm-hmm. And he's dealing with that. And, and, and Patrick Rother talks about how, how he deals with it, how he emotionally deals with it. And it's not – for some reason, it's not boring. It's interesting. And how he plays. And, and you're right there with – Quoth going through that whole emotional thing yeah. and how his loot and his music gets him through all that. And he finally makes it to the city and he's like, oh, I mean, and then literally it's like right in his face, like you're thinking, oh, he's going to carry his father's loot with him for life. It's going to be out there. Bam! It's like, oh my God, you. And it's a spoiler, folks. That's what's called. That's yeah. a spoiler. <laughs> That's what we call a spoiler. That's a spoiler. And when we mean, and when, when Russ is saying loot, we don't mean money, goods. We mean the musical instrument. L U T E. Right. Yes. So that, yeah. and that was, and that's just, and that, there's examples of that kind of stuff throughout the entire. You never really know. He doesn't really, at least not yet, he doesn't really kill characters like Stephen King kills characters, but he right. kills characters' dreams <laughs> like, yes, he does. repeatedly. And, mm-hmm. and you think you figure it out how he's going to get out of this situation, and then it's like, well, that avenue just died. Crap. You know, this is really interesting. Yeah. yeah, and I think, again, the nuance there is by caring what he cares about, and he mm-hmm. also kills... Um, I keep wanting to say the Edema Ruse, but he kills Kavolt's dreams... That mm. it, it makes it feel very real. I mean, because we all have dreams that sometimes get squashed, or things don't work out the way we want, or sometimes we lose our prized, uh, you know, our army case gets stolen, and all our prized figures are stolen, and you know that kind of stuff. So I think that helps us identify with the character. Yeah, oh, yeah. 
feels like a very real existence back in time. Exactly. Talk uh, about the university. So, well, not yet, because oh. because I, I the, if we just talk about these plot points, I think you miss the driving reality yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that, Go that ahead. brings this character forward is the Chandrian. It always comes back to the Chandrian. And so he's basically lost all faith. He's lost his loot. He's lost all hope. He's living this, this empty, wretched existence. And he's, he's befriended sort of a little bit by this, this, this storyteller, Scarpy. And one of Scarpy's tales is that, you know, and he's, and he's still hungry for information about the Chandrian. And this guy's like, well, you know, I don't know the Chandrian. There are not a lot of stories about them, but. As it as he slowly digs through, he finds out that there's this ancient ancient group that was actually the enemies of the Chandrian that have buried themselves so deeply in in folklore and everything else that nobody even remembers that they were connected to the Chandrian. And so now he's like, oh, wait a minute, there's the way there's a way to fight them. There's a group that fought them. Well, I can't do that as an urchin. So he figures out that there's this university far far away, and it's the only one in the whole kingdom the whole world basically and they teach these things that when he was younger he um there was a guy abanthi who yeah, was think- traveling with his uh with his group and told him about the university and told him about the name of the wind and actually he saw him use the name of the wind and the name of the wind is basically everything has a name and if you know its name you can control it yeah i think i think the, i think what's interesting is the uh the chandrian are a driving plot point for him and, and they're his focus for his thing but i think his desire to learn magic and go to the university, I think, predated that. Because when Abanthi joined the troop, before his parents died, he met him and joined him. He started being obsessed or being really fascinated well, he by was, He was interested, magics, but he right? didn't want to leave the troop. Uh, well, he, was talk- he talked about going to the university. He, he, I think he no, talked I, I think Abanthi t- talked to him about going and gave him that book and said, I think you're wasted. As, as... But he was like, I love the Adama Ru. I love my family. This is what I want to do. Yeah, and, yeah. and he's intrigued, and he was pulled towards the university. But he, well, he, I don't think he would have gone to the university without this drive. Yes, yeah. yes, maybe. And this well, is yeah, this maybe. is the kind of book talk I wanted to have. Exactly what we're talking about. Um, so I, I agree with Russ and with Craig. I see Kavath as he has a burning desire to learn, and he and he does meet Abernathy before. But you're right; he needed the tether. And, and he's and he has an eagerness to learn anything also. Right, yes. Right. yes. I mean, he's learning all kinds of stuff the whole time, which is why whenever he gets right. in a bind, there's always something he knows that can help him along the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but so and, but, and the only thing I want to add about the Shandrian, and this is I hate to admit this because Russell goes, see, I told you um, they they are not supposed to be spoken about, talked about. People don't like to say their name, um, you know, very similar to Voldemort. Mm hmm. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot similar to Harry Potter, but there's a lot of similar to other books, too. The other thing, I think the book gets compared a lot to uh, two famous books. Uh, one is Harry Potter, and the other is Interview with the Vampire. The Interview with the Vampire comes from the distinctive storytelling uh, the backstory, yeah, right, which is yeah. exactly the interview. And then, of course, the Harry Potter thing, just because, well, I'll get into that later, but mostly because of the school, but there's a lot of other similarities, too. Right. Yeah. Uh, so keep going, Craig. Get the, well, that's get the basically, I mean, that brings him to the university, and of right. course he has no money, and, right. and he's got this deep, abiding need to learn, and now he's being driven because he wants to know how, how who are these people who fight the Chandrian, how can he fight the Chandrian. So he goes to the university through these awesome machinations and, 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 uh, and gambles. He, he gets into the university. Not only does he not have to pay tuition, but they have to pay him. Right. Because he he pulls all these these tricks with all these performance, you yeah, know that part's just fantastic. Tricks. I mean, I I just loved that whole that whole section. And, and then, that to me, let's pause on that because that yeah. has nothing similar with anything else. And and you know, I think we can spend some time talking about. It. So when you go to the university, that whole financial aspect of the exactly, university. you can't just walk out, go bing bong. I'm a brilliant mind. Let me in, you know. And I, I don't come, you know. I'm not a muggle, so let me in. And I had never seen any – I've read a lot of fantasy books and I haven't seen – he goes up before the panel and they set tuition based on how you answer these questions. And he, ans- you know, he answers some right and he bungles well, no, some it was others. hilarious. He-, he fell asleep in the room where they tested and he heard all the <laughs> test questions ahead of time. Oh, well, yeah, he spied. Right. But, well, he, but here's – th- I think what's, what's interesting about this and I think this was actually a very brilliant uh, plot device um, – is the idea that there is this tuition that has to be paid, and Quoth is not rich. Um, uh, right. I think somewhat, uh, one of the reviewers I was reading a while ago, who was also comparing the work, the work to Harry Potter, said that Rowling made, a, made an error in her plot 
with Harry Potter as good as it is by by magic by by very very beginning Harry Potter's rich. You know, very right. early on, his oh, there's your parents' money. You 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 have more money than you need, need to worry about. Right. And but what we learn from the writing style of this book is by making this plot point that um, you need to get this money every 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 quarter or term, term yeah. or whatever they call them. So, you know, the the, 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 the the fluff is that he goes into this council, he has to pass a series of tests, they set a point. Because he de- he dazzles them so much with his raw talent, and, and partly because he cheated, because he leaves dropped earlier, um, he, he's able to impress them so much that they want to give him a shot at the university, so they basically let him in for free. But after that, he makes some enemies, you know, makes some missteps, but also, in general, he needs to prove himself. They start setting his tuition higher and higher. And a major plot point throughout the story is how is Quoth going to survive all of his challenges, but also make enough money to make right. to the next yes. to the next it's, term? Yeah. yeah, it's definitely as driving a force in the book as his as his secret quest for the Shandrian. It is, and and it's 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 really interesting because what they another thing they compared to Potter was the idea that Harry Potter is not really about Harry's quest against Voldemort. That's no. that's it's really about the world of the wizarding world of Harry right. Potter. What's it like to go to Hogwarts? This book is similar. It's not really about his quest to be defeat the Shandrian. That's the overall story, but it's really about how does this magic work in this world? How does the university teach it? Yep. That's yep. all the fascinating part. And and I think what was really clever was this by having this little plot device about the money. It, it makes you. It puts this pressure that makes it interesting on him trying to solve these challenges, which makes it even more co- cool. Well, that's where I disagree. I think um, yes, you can draw parallels. You can draw similarities, but. But you're right. Voldemort is the enemy, but Harry Potter's more like going through his life and he's learning about not being a muggle. He's not a muggle. He's learning about Hogwarts and the train and the candies. And then, oh, my God, Voldemort tries to attack him. And so he sort of defends himself. You know, Harry Potter does not wake up in the morning and say, I will avenge my parents' death. I will search out Voldemort and all his weaknesses. And that's not. But Craig's right. This, Mm -hmm. you know, Kvolt has a burning desire to kill the Shandrian, frankly. And, well, I think and to, he has a burning desire for. I think his. I think if you wanted to come up with one overwhelming characteristic of that character, it would be burning desire. Period. Yeah, yeah burning desire. Period. All. He's very perfect. passionate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's he's. Perfect. He wants to learn. He wants the the woman that he wants. He wants no. You know whether yeah. or not he yes. can. I mean that he wants to be the highest. You know the best in in his mat in his talents with magic. Right. Right. In artificing, um, which we haven't even gotten to yet. And so yeah, Rush, you're right. They, Hogwarts is, is explored and discovered and all the uniqueness that of that magical world, which is brilliant, and Rothfuss does the same thing. He lets us into what this university really is like. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, while we're talking, and that's basically where his story ends. I mean, there's a weird drug-addicted dragon thing that happens, and and uh, <clears throat> you get a, you get a, there's a possessed mercenary attack at the end, and, and you find out that his, his, assistant bast is actually a fairy yep. who is his um his apprentice and is trying to shock him back into being the great hero that he had become before he became this innkeeper but but for the most part that covers the rest of the book and so we can spend a little time i think talking about uh the arcanum which is the part of the university that teaches magic right and there's yes. there's two there's well there's three basic kind well actually you've got You've got speaking. You've got the the word, the names, naming, yes, right? knowing the name, and that's the num- That's like the most powerful magic in this world, and nobody really knows how to do it, or very, very, very few people know how to do it to the point where most people don't think it is real anymore. Mm-hmm. And then you have sympathy, which is more like the workman's magic, which is that more of a typical um, magical structure that you've seen in other books, where you've got you know, if I heat up this piece of metal here then this other piece of metal connected to it that somewhere else will heat up and i will you know there's sort of that almost like quantum physics i was element. about to say it almost follows physical physics yeah right. that's, i think that's my favorite part of his of his world where he, sympathy is is very physical and yeah. mm-hmm. there are limits to it mm-hmm. um, yes and it's it's done in a slightly that part sort of reminded me of dresden because in dresden there's this idea that you know, there's there's limits to his magic, and where the power has to come from someplace, sort of thing. Yeah. And like he leverages lightning or something big, but but this is even more interesting because you can screw up and get you know get the life sucked out of you literally, right? If you mess <laughs> yeah. up, yeah. Let's let's pause and talk about this because I really like this, and I think this is one of the major distinctions and why this guy is a is a unique and new novelist in this genre. 
I've read tons of fantasy books before where if you know the demon's name, you, you can control it, period. Right. You just say it might be a complicated name and you might have to find parts of it. But once you know it and speak it, you're, you're good to go. Not in this book. It somehow, again, it follows this physics quantity. Like, to know, to, you can maybe learn the old word, word of the name of the wind, which we don't even know what it is. They don't tell us. But you have to know more than that. You have to somehow know how the wind operates. How does it operate in the wind, wind and the rain? You know, like, there's all these, these symbolism of, the, of leaves twirling into little tornadoes. And, and it's almost like you have to understand it, almost like uh, Neo does with the Matrix. That's kind of how I get it. And whether you understand stone or heat or things like that. So and clearly it's, you know, it's very difficult because in order to control the wind, you have to know literally every aspect of the wind in all of its phases at all times. But that you also, you that occurs to you in a moment of high emotional stress. Right. So that understanding usually is done on, an, on a subconscious level. Well, it's interesting because I think naming, naming is almost the antithesis of sympathy. Yes, right? yes. Because... Because for sympathy to work, you have to draw – the power has to come from someplace, right? But yeah. for naming to work, like to call upon the name of the wind and actually throw some, someone across the room, that doesn't drain you in any way. No. Like, That's right. There's That's no, a good point, Russ. That, I didn't that, catch that, that distinction. Like, that breaks the like, – like naming and, – and, and I think Quoth actually says this at one point when he's trying to get the, the one crazy master there to help him out. Yeah. Naming is like – he calls it Elodin. true it's, – it's true magic. Like, yeah. like they don't really consider sympathy magic. Sympathy is right. just another branch of science. But naming is almost like true magic. You can you can call forth fire from nothing. You can you know you can you can you can pick people up and they fly around the room. You can do almost anything if you know the names for you can you can literally dematerialize a wall in front of you and walk through it. You know, so it's, so naming is almost like true magic, right? Whereas sympathy is this more abstracted sort of science variant, which is sort of really fascinating to me. Yeah, I, and like I, I love it. Yeah, Me I like too. I love it too. And so sympathy again is like Craig said. So, sim- and, and what Russ alluded to, sympathy is this cool kind of magic where, let's say Craig's wearing armor or he's got iron on him, and I I somehow get a shaving of that iron off of his armor and I have it in my hand, and then let's say I've got a coal from a fire, I can use the coal from the fire to heat the iron in my hand, transfer that heat through the air to Craig's armor, heat him up, make him sweat, or make him uncomfortable, or or boil him alive. But I mean, and the the thing about the fact that it pulls out of you if you can't provide something else is awesome. Like you can do fire based magic with nothing, yes, prepared ahead of time. Love, it's is, pulling the heat out of you, right? So they if talk you about, do it too much, and once you start doing it, it's almost like you reach a point of no return where your brain just won't stop trying, and it will suck all the heat out of you, and you'll die. You'll right, that's what it. Russ was talking about. But to begin with, they can hold that ember, and if that fire was still burning, he'd. He'd almost right. have limitless energy. Again, like physics, to draw energy, turn into a different kind of energy. Right. But well, then right. they talk about well, exactly cool. what you guys says. If he doesn't have the heat source, he can actually draw the heat from his own, well, all magicians that can do sympathy, from his own body, right. um, you well, know, from his own blood. And here's so what I think is, is most interesting. When, 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 when an author creates a, 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 a fantasy world like this, and you, and you create a fantasy set of physics, right? So, yeah. Um, what you want to have is consistency, and what he does a brilliant job with is, is he explains this to you, like how linking works and how you have to have a link and, and a source and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he does certain things, and you're like, and you're almost like figuring out as the character does. Like when mm-hmm. Quote says, "We need a way to notify each other when we're apart." So I'm going to take this stick, I'm going to snap it in half, and I'm thinking, "Oh, because it's from the same stick, it's got a really strong link, right?" And I'm like, "Thinking all through my head, I'm like," and he says, "Now I can link them. So when I wiggle the stick in my pocket, it'll wiggle the stick in your pocket, and that'll tell you the bad guy's coming, and you can be yeah, you know a quarter yeah. mile away." And yeah. that kind of stuff, you're you're not only just like, "Oh yeah, okay, that makes," you're like, "Oh yeah, that." I could do that. <laughs> You're almost like in mm-hmm. the world with him, helping him solve those problems. Yeah. And it's so in turn, I would say when, really, in fantasy really, and science yeah. fiction, when you're dealing with stuff that doesn't really exist, internal consistency is going to make or break yes. your, your story. Indeed. And, and I really and, love and, and Patrick Rothfuss's internal consistency is awesome. It's brilliant. Yeah. And I really love it. It's not a and d type of magic where you open up a book, you somehow move your fingers in some arcane way, say a few arcane words and you create a fireball. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a whole set of, like you said, fantasy physics. That's a good term, Russ. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Behind yeah. it. Yeah. And then artificing, which we've mentioned, I is merely artificing. using sympathy in a, like building a machine that uses sympathy. Well, no, there's more because it's, it, it, it adds in rune-based magic. Yeah, it's very there's, dwarven. <laughs> there's creating sigils in uh, runes right. and sigils carving them into different metals. 
Yeah, like the example they that one of the things Quoth invents, which is very well respected, is the idea of the arrow catch, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's this, and it's really really clever because you you see the physics going on. So the idea is that uh, someone gets shot with an arrow, an arrow shot at someone. And there's this device that sort of looks like a big steel lantern kind of thing. And when the arrow gets near someone, all of a sudden the arrow just stops in midair and you hear this loud slang inside the arrow catch. And what he's done is there's like a bunch of essentially mousetrap springs in there. And there's a bunch of etched runes that detect the arrow coming. And they, and they flip the mousetrap spring. So the spring collapses and the energy from the spring is transferred right into the arrow, equal and opposite amount, and the arrow just stops in midair. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then the teacher's like, well, that's great. What if an arrow comes from a different direction? Well, he's got the, the you know, because it has to be opposite. So these springs are all aligned in different angles, and there's a special reset button on the bottom that you pull really hard, and it resets all the springs. It's like, and you can just see it's, you know, he could have just said, yeah, you invented this gold coin that if an arrow gets shot at you, it bounces off you. But no, it's this really wow. interesting amalgamation of physics and magic in a really cool, neat uh, neat way. I just really enjoyed that part a lot. Yeah, I like how he adds that 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 yeah. third layer of magic, which is the rune creation, yeah. the sigil creation, yeah. you know, and, and again, using kind of metallurgy and forging right. to create that kind of magic. And, you know, I kind of like in the first book, uh, this is where the money comes in, is he, he basically takes his, uh, oh, crap, I can't think of the word, uh, work study. This is his work study. So instead yeah. of working in the library, which actually students do, um, he works in the in the forge under one of the masters, one of the professors there. Right. And, you know, he, he comes up with his own mind. He doesn't even th- think of this he comes up with a sympathy lamp which is what craig was saying it's a lamp that uses different magical properties oh, to no kind the of... sympathy lamp is what everybody makes yeah, right but he creates the hooded he, he well he right. well no he didn't there's the there's the legend of the the thieves the lamp thieves lamp and he's like oh i think i could probably figure out how to do that <laughs> and he goes ahead and does it yeah, yeah. he yeah. creates the thieves lamp and, his teacher's and like, he's we all do proud that. of himself right. oh, because part of what you can do is you can as a student you can create a sympathy lamp which is just a lamp that works without um it's not a candle or yeah, a torch it's, a, it's like an eternal little uh lamp light bulb it's a magical and they lamp. sell them to um ships and they sell them to ships. the world and yeah. you the student gets a cut after the after the That's um, one thing you can do to make money expenses are paid so so Kavalth makes the thieves lamp. He doesn't know he's well, he knows he's making a thieves lamp, but he doesn't know it's bad. So he takes it to the master. He's like, "Look what I made!" You know, <laughs> I'm really good at this. And he's like, "Ah, oh, you can't make contraband, right?" You know, but he kind of hides it and uses it, and yeah. and uh, it's it's that that part. Really that would be like going to your computer uh, programming instructor and saying, "Look, I made a universal key that'll get me into anything." Yes, right. it's like yes. saying, well, "You're good," but now give me that. It's like saying, "Look, I have an invisibility cloak." Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> it's not an invisibility cloak. Right along. <laughs> All right. Speaking of that, Russ, why don't you yeah. go on? So you've been you've been poking on air at other times of how this book is uh, Harry Potter just redressed. Well, no, I, I don't think I ever said it that. I said there's parts of the book that remind me of Harry Potter, no, and no, I said, no. and and then you guys poked fun at me, claiming there was no similarities, and I kind of laughed at you. I don't think I ever said there are no similarities. Yeah, he's recanting himself again. Yeah. The similarities Oh, no, no, no. Like, they're both at school. Yes, so there's a similarity. No, no, that's what I mean. He has has an enemy, the the guy that hates him, Ambrose, is rich. So, yeah. Here we go. That's also... Let me try this. You you guys tell me where you think I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'll make it up. Orphan (laughs) orphan boy whose parents are murdered by a dark power. Dark power is thought to be gone. Becomes, Becomes a lifelong quest to stop. Attends a university filled with magic, very similar to Hogwarts. Brilliant, frightening, and aloof teachers, sweet girls, bullies, outcasts. Ambrose and Malafoy are cut from the same cloth. Both are rich bullies that bent on the hero suffering. Rafe, is it me, or does it seem like he's reading from some sort of website? He's no. reading from a website, and no, also we I'm need not. to go I'm back. reading from my list. Okay. I wrote this bullets on the, on the same sheet. Scroll down to the bottom. Listen, he, <laughs> Craig, uh, Craig, the other thing he's doing, too, is his two original statements are, a wise man's fear is the same as Harry Potter. That's not what now I said. I never said no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Ne- no, I never, never said, said that. that. I said what, it, what how this started was I was saying I was enjoying the book. I love the book. Yep. I said I could do without the Harry Potter parts. I would rather get back into what makes the world original. And you guys are like, how is it like Harry Potter? And I and that and I said, Well, it's totally like Harry Potter. And I said, Listen, you got like, like that's crazy. You're just making your stuff up. So like and I just and it, it's I think it's it's I I don't know how you can read this book and not draw the parallels. I'm not I saying it's bad. I see this, okay, I see similarities. I don't see parallels. So let me go through this. Yes, a orphan be, a orphan boy whose parents are murdered by a dark power. Did did she invent that with Harry Potter? Because I no, don't but think so. no, no, but but wait, but, I'm going down. Dark power thought to be gone, but becomes lifelong quest to. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's the, identical. Okay. Okay. I'm going to yeah. give that to you, but um, uh, okay. Attends a university of magic. Well, that's, I mean, that's yeah. s- essential to the story, but okay. I, if you want to draw that parallel, it didn't have to be brilliant, it frightening and aloof teachers. Well, they, they do teach magic. Uh, sweet girls, bullies, and outcasts. Welcome to any school. On yeah, the what, any school. Well, right, but what Ambrose about- and Malfoy are cut from the same cloth. I disagree because how, how I think that Malfoy. No, because there's a whole there's a whole aristocracy that has nothing to do with the Arcanum and the university in with Quoth, which is actually central to the story of Harry Potter. Well, Malfoy. The Malfoy family is is. Is is deeply entrenched in the story, whereas Ambrose is just this rich, uh, nasty. Uh, I person. think that's that's semantics, though. We're really talking about the idea that you've got this rich bully who's causing problems. I'm just saying, there's. I, I don't know how you can not see these similarities. I'm, I'm I'm seeing them as similarities. I'm not seeing them as cut from the same cloth, right? Or a redo of Hogwarts. And there's a lot like impressing friends and making connections via natural talent, music versus Quidditch. Uh, yeah, well, that's... okay. So you got a, you got a schoolboy, right? Who's who's feeling like an outcast, right? But Russ, himself. I guess my point is, how are you going to tell this story where he's going to this school to learn this magic if he's not going to have? But my point, my point isn't. My point never was that. There. My point is this: if you um, this is an author. How old is is he? Mm, I don't know. He's not very I just, old. I want to say he's his, he's not like is he, is he like the book came out in two thousand and seven. I, I I I'm just saying that I think this is a this is a guy who enjoyed Harry Potter when he was younger, and no. it informed him. It, it did. It, it, this book is informed by Harry Potter. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Just like all fantasy, most fantasies informed by Tolkien. That's not a bad thing. It's just. I think he's he's informed by Harry Potter. There's a lot of stuff going on here in the main plot that it's a very similar book. And most reviewers of the book I, will, say, I, will draw well, parallels see, to now, it. Now, Russ, if we were talking politics and Rafe said most somebody said something, you'd come down on him like a ton of bricks. What, what, you no. have three examples. Is that most? Most reviewers think it's like Harry Potter? I see. I don't. I, I, that's a trick that you usually never let anybody else get away with. Why is that a trick? So like so like because most because you've given three examples the book's been reviewed by go, well, God knows Craig, how I many hundreds of people I didn't I just grabbed okay I, I grabbed Amazon.com I, don't, I, I just disagree with your use I of grabbed, most That's I grabbed very Onion AV and I grabbed Orson Scott Card right are those but, uh, are those inappropriate well, I, I, and David Levine who's I, I mean I didn't no I don't have ten thousand on here because I only had time today to okay to so search. most of the ones that you found. But right, what I'm right. saying is, what I'm saying is, if Orson Scott Card, okay, yeah. and and Amazon.com, yeah. and and I'm not saying nobody's saying it's a bad book, and David Levine all I know, I know. all Keep compare going. it to Harry Potter. My only point is, how can you guys sit there and say this book is nothing like Harry Potter? No, because, I see. Just like you never said it was right, the exactly the same as Harry Potter. We never said it's nothing like Harry Potter. Correct. I'm pretty sure you guys laughed at me and said, "I can't believe you think this is like Harry Potter." Because you said something like, "Ah, the book is Harry Potter, just recloaked." Right. I, well, no, Russ. I never actually, said you that. You quoted yourself a minute ago and said you liked the book, but you could do without the Harry Potter. I could. Parts. There it, you go. I, there and you go. And I disagree Harry... that they're Harry Potter parts. I also oh, disagree really? that that's the, the natural place that most readers are going to go in their heads. Oh, oh I, this is like Harry Potter. Yes, you will. I There's, think it'll happen to some. Every. But, here's the thing. It's like it's like Star Wars and Tolkien. Okay, if you write a book that has a, if you write a sci-fi book that has glowing swords and mental powers, people are going to think Star Wars. If you write a book uh, you know with, a, with a child going to a to a university that's about magic, because Harry Potter is a seminal work. Okay, it is a seminal literary classic. Okay, you can't write a book that has a student going to a magic school and not think Harry Potter. It's just it's part of the it's part of the it, it's what it is. It's the way it is now. I, and I agree. And I've always you know agreed. Let's talk about that. That's a great analogy. So there's a Jedi Academy. So so did did um, who wrote I can't think of who wrote Harry Potter all of a sudden. J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling's. Did she steal from George Lucas because um, what's no. his name? The head of the no, the white because be- because the Jedi uh, is Academy the Yoda. He's the Yoda. No, because Jedi Academy wasn't a, wasn't it wasn't about a fourteen year old child. No, and it wasn't okay. a seminal work either. And it wasn't no, and it was not a seminal literary classic. Okay, what I'm saying, Wise Man's Fear is a fantastic book, and so is um, Name of the Wind. I'm not saying they're bad works at all. I'm just saying there's a, there's influences in here from Harry Potter. No, right, I and I and I, I no, I, I will think it's agree foolish that there to are say there's no influences, but I disagree that silly. you're going to read this and most people are going to pop into their heads Harry Potter. Oh, I yeah, think I didn't think Harry Potter once. I didn't think Harry Potter once either. 
Wow, that's a, well, I think that's a little weird, but that's okay. <laughs> I do think it's weird. I don't know how you can read that. Not because Harry Potter. I think what Craig and I are saying, and we could move on to the next topic maybe, is that just because there's a university and just because there's professors and just because there's a young boy doesn't it does not a Harry Potter. But the, but the parallels think, are more I, than I that. My problem with the analogy or the but connection see, is that the characters and the situations are so unique. Correct. That they lived in their own place in my head and didn't immediately call to mind Harry Potter. Right, but right. I, think, I think the difference is, though, is where I disagree with you, Rafe, is that's not the similarity. The similarity is not young boy out of school magic. Okay. Okay, the similarity is orphan boy, dark power, magic, facing the same villain, runs into a same bully, has the same... Has the same but um, you, you can teenage... make the same parallels with a bunch of Disney movies, too. Correct. You... you well, I don't I mean, know. The, the, the archetypes that you're well, like, calling on are not Harry Potter archetypes. They're archetypes that have been around for hundreds of uh, years. I don't know. Right. I That's don't know. the other not objection, Craig. But it's and I so, have. it's so, cl- it's, uh, I don't know. It's very, some parts are very close. I mean, I don't, I'm surprised that you don't think Ambrose. And the other thing, too, is the Quidditch and the music is very close in parallel, also. I disagree mm-hmm. completely okay. on that. Harry Potter's only comfortable, like, he's only social, really socially skilled when he's on the Quidditch field. And Quoth is very similar. In that he gets into his friends, he doesn't really start gaining respect. No, because he makes friends in the art of fishing. He makes friends yeah. with. Uh, I would also say that Harry Potter's very he has he has a very low self esteem, and Quidditch gives him that self esteem, whereas Quoth has very high self. esteem Well, they're not the same person. I mean, I'm not saying they're the same character, right? But no, you're, but I'm just saying they're getting different things out of the their different activities. They're getting different things out of their activities. Yeah. The fact that they're good at their individual activities, I to me, doesn't strike a parallel. I'll have to agree, agree to disagree. Cause I, I think uh, we will. Yes, we I will. I think we will, yes. <laughs> yes. All okay. Right. What a book Craig. club master. Where do we go from here? <laughs> All right. Where we go from here is um, I think we talked about how this is a different breed of fantasy and how the arcane is handled. But I also think this is a different – and we alluded to this a little bit. We also talked about uh, – we didn't talk about the world setting. And for that, I mean – and we don't have to spend too much time on this again. There's, there are dragons, and there are the fae, and there are mythical creatures. But again, it's it's almost like how there's physics and rules. It's 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 not a, a fantastical setting of dragons and the fae and pixies and stuff. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? It's it's. Well, I it's, think it it's, didn't. They start fit into the way, natural world. A, uh, I think it's that way now. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would say it took a sharp uh, turn. I think in, 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 in name the of the book. in name of the wind, you're pretty much classic fantasy now. I think you, think, you think so, huh? Except for the wise, physics. The wise man's I mean, wise man's fear. Except for physics. No, the magic system is awesome and it's unique. And I'm not saying the world not, doesn't feel unique, but you've got the the dragons, the um, the fey, the um, the the parallel magic universes, and all that stuff. It's definitely feeling more, yeah. uh, more, more, much more fantasy. It's almost hmm. like when when when. Uh, George R. R. Martin's books went from pure, almost feeling like no fantasy. I was like, oh my God, we're in fantasy. You know, it's, okay. it's it almost did you did guys that feel book. that was a juxtaposition? Like to me, it was, it, I, I didn't even notice it. You, I now agree with you, but to, it wasn't a shut, it wasn't a stop moment for me. I wasn't like, oh, no, wait. to me, it was just discovering more of the world. Yeah, okay. I kind of feel like right. you, you knew that was coming. You know, right. I think that. Oh, I didn't expect it. I think I with the sure. skittering things and all that stuff, you kind of knew that the world yeah, there was, was more, stuff going yeah. on underneath the surface. Yeah, I think you kind of knew. I guess. Actually, Russ, this is where I did think of Harry Potter, honestly, mm-hmm. because it wasn't, oh, look, a hippogriff. Oh, look, there's a zoo filled with a dragon. Oh, look, there's a chimera. You know what I mean? Like, that was all in Harry Potter. And to me, I didn't feel that this, that this book had that. So it had fantasy? It had the mythical creatures that fantasy books typically no, have. No, he's, he's taken them and given them his own names. And Yeah, right. But there's a dragon. I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see how many more there are, but I, it's right. interesting to see. But I think yeah. that when you started seeing, like, okay, Bast is a demon and all that stuff started happening, you're kind of like, okay, this is going. He's the fae. He's not yeah, a demon. Or fae. You're right, fae. Right. Now, the other thing I really liked at this part of, of the fantasy, and there are other books that do this. I mean, the, the Wheel of Time does this that you guys hate. Um, <laughs> George R.R. R. Martin does this. Um, you know, the other types of peoples, the other types of societies, the other types of cultures. And I really, yeah. in a wise man's fear, they really go into the, the background of the Adem mercenary. See, and, this is another uh, example. I, this is where he did a great job. And this is yes. what I'm saying. Yeah, let's talk I wish, about this. I wish there was less Harry Potter because here you have this, uh, another storytelling technique that was similar, again, to what, what I was saying Rowling was doing, which is the story is not so much about the grand quest. It's about how you live in the moment and discover the world. 
mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. the the Adem mercenaries are that way with the hand talk and everything. Like I loved mm-hmm. learning about the hand talk and how you would Me too. and and the emotions in the in the hands and all that stuff happening there with that. And I was thinking, this is really, really cool. And this was something that was really cool. And, and you know, outside of that whole university thing, I was like, I want more of this. And that's why I think I really liked um, the second half of the second book the best out of, out of both of them so far. Because it mm-hmm. really got him out of that university setting and into the, into the grander world. And you started seeing, you know, how the court. Oh, the other thing that I thought was fantastic uh, up there with the data was the whole ring thing. Right? Oh, yes, so when he goes the to the mayor. exchanging of the rings with the mayor yeah. and all that. Oh, and that I love whole, that. That whole yeah. political intrigue there. See, that was awesome, and that was all. And there, I'm totally with you guys. That's all, like, never been done or really original creative thinking. And so for me, I could do with less of the university, which I've seen before in some form or another, and yep. more of this yep. other cool, really, really <laughs> un- unique imagined stuff. <laughs> Well, I like if we'd spend some time on the Adem and the hand talk and everything, we'll give a little primer to those that are, you know, haven't read the book yet, if they've gotten this far, is, is yeah, what I, well, first of all, I love training films. I like, you know, um, G.I. Jane because it's a training film. I love all the training films. And so this is where Kavolth gets a chance to go to the Adem lands and basically learn about their society and culture. So I love that whole, it's like a story within a story. Um, the other thing that I think is really cool is um, that whole hand talking thing and how Patrick Rothfuss mm-hmm. really gets into describing that and how this culture views like facial gestures um, as crazy. Like how we, like they literally like the, childish. The, yeah. 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 And they make all these intricate hand movements that are even so subtle to those that are untrained that can express wealths and wealths and wealths right. of emotion and opinion and nuance. And, and yeah. Patrick Rothfuss breaks all of that down. Like, I, I almost feel like if you studied it, you could speak a dem. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It was really cool. That was really cool. What'd you guys think about that? I love that part. Yeah. Me too. Well, Rafe, why don't you tell us about your favorite part of the books? Yes. Um, We're running okay. out of time. And even. <laughs> There's this guy in a Dunkin' Donuts uniform at the door telling us we have to leave the book room. What's the book okay, room I'm happy bunk? to. Um, my, my goal, just FYI, we don't have to hit all the points. I, I just wanted to have a book talk about you guys. All right, all right, so, so I guess that was one I'm of my... That's to Rafe. Tell us what your favorite part of the books is. <laughs> gotcha. That was one of my favorite it. parts. <laughs> and I think I really... my least subtle. <laughs> I really liked the... Uh, I did like the part when um, he's, he's, done a, he's done one of his missions... And um, he gets lost in the land of the Fae, F-A-E. And he meets this mythical creature called the Felurian. And again, what I loved about that is there, I have never seen where they've gone into the Fae where time and space were somehow altered. So, really? Really? No, I'd never, I'd never, um, never at, at uh... least even in Dresden where you could tell they would go to a different place, I never thought they went to a different dimension. I just thought they were in a different Oh, that's world. actually I, pretty standard. I thought it was pretty standard, like right out of that's that's actually every pretty standard book. to the point where that's 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 very common folklore. Oh, yeah. interesting. I must have missed all the standard fantasy books where that happened. That was totally well, that's new not to me. standard fantasy. That's standard folklore. Right. Oh, is it? Yes. Yes. The, oh, I the, thought the, they existed. The fairy right or the fae when you go to where they right. are. Uh, one, in fact, if, just, you, if you enjoy something there, whether you whether it's sex or food, then you can't come back. That's standard. Mm-hmm. And oh, time know, yeah. flowing differently there is mm-hmm. totally standard to the point where, you know, you go there and you come back and you're an old man or you come back fact, and everybody you knew is dead. It's, or, it's so standard. It was just in episode one, season four, True Blood. <laughs> indeed, it was. <laughs> the exact thing, as a matter of fact. Which is actually right out of the book version from, uh, what's her name, in uh, the Susie Stackhouse books. Right, right. The Susie right. Stackhouse right. books. Do you yeah. get the sense, I, I guess I've kind of recognized that, yeah, you go in and time changes, but do you get the sense they're in a different world? A totally, yeah, totally fact, honest, I abhor that part of the book. In fact, I was good, I'm with you, Craig. That is my absolute least part, favorite part of the book. Oh, and I, I like actually it. felt myself getting angry at the author for this one reason. I said to myself, you skipped. He he yep. cheated twice Too in this huge. book. Huge. Yep. Oh yeah, you guys talked about that. He I cheated the whole book and he, never thought now, he cheated. He's never in his backstory. Quoth hasn't hasn't literally. It feels like he hasn't skipped a minute of his life. He's been telling every single thing all the way through. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he gets every to major this, point. He gets to these two major events. One of them is yeah. the court trial, and the other one is him traveling over the sea, where he implies he had all these cool pirate adventures, and it was almost so like what? the Iliad and the Odyssey. I get to miss that. And I'm treated to what a hundred pages of him sleeping with with sex kitten. I mean, come on, awesome. what a waste of paper! Now, come on, no, it was I hated it, different... and I also hated what happened at the end with the demon uh, tree. Yeah, that if you talk to that tree, tree, everything you try for the rest of your life will fail. 
Yeah, that so was that's awesome. Well, that put in a well. That actually, that was sort of an interesting plot point um, because now well, I you, thought it was a great interesting plot point. Yeah. but it, I hate it now because I'm like everything that happens. I'm like, oh, well, that's. But I think that's kind of cool. I, I don't. That part is that part was kind of genius. But if and I guess if I had to suffer through all the pages of him of all the different sexual positions he was learning with the chick. Then I guess it's okay, but, but why do you see that was a whole different part of magic going on that he? No, I don't need. I don't was, know. That was it? he was shy with girls, and when he came out, he was like uh, yes. that was jiggle. Well, one of the he things gets that added well, effect, but one he's of the, the only person that can had has gone with Felurian in return. Yeah, but I don't need. I don't need graphic. I mean, it was weird. It was, there were two. Why problems. not? I was, there were two problems in that section. First well, of all, too was for that or no? Something? It's just the no, rest no, of the book's nothing like that. Purient. The rest of the book is nothing like that, though. Yes, it is. It goes into into in, in, no. in uh, not a mute uh, minute detail, just like just not like about how sympathy works. Not about no, not about that. I think I think why not? That, uh, it just it, it doesn't. It's not necessary. It's it's a why? Oh. It's a it's a. It's I a, liked it. No, it's a it's a puerile writing style that mm-hmm. uh, that allows you to sell the book for titillation. Nah, that is I not just... required. Okay, it's just not. Okay, and it, and and the other thing about it, it, it's just it's just it's just a waste. You don't need that. And if you're going to skip whole sections. With adventures and other stuff about that, I don't know why See, you have to have this in here. I don't know. It sounds like that where we disagree is that I like. Well, you know, I like chick flicks, right? I mean, I I watched The Bodyguard the other night. But that's I mean, like saying I, that's like saying there's sex in the new George R. R. Martin series to attract women. There's not sex in the George R. R. Martin series to attract women. There's sex in the George R. R. Martin series because it's on cable and men like to watch boobies. Oh, you're saying this that. book is this is the one section of these books that he's he's well, like, that basically. In my life. opinion, a fantasy book doesn't have to just be about magic, swashbuckling swords, no, pirates. No, it doesn't. And but when it but when it is through the whole thing, and then suddenly there's a big chunk that right. uh, that's about sex, then that then it j- does not jar honestly. To me, right. that would you would have a you would have a good argument for that if it was only twelve pages long. Then it would be oh he threw in a TNA section. No, it's but worth since he longer. devotes such a long time to this experience, oh, I hated it. No, I hated it too. And, the other thing and I didn't about think it, it was particularly well written. No, and the other thing about it, I also don't like. This is another direction with Kof I don't like. What is he bad at? <laughs> That's true. That's very true. I mean, he's like the the problem they're having with him is it's like that whole section was like oh here's where Kof becomes an awesome lover. Right, and oh, and then the next the one was here is where he becomes, becomes an, an awesome, awesome swordsman. Right, here's where he becomes the awesome swordsman. It's like they're setting him up now. We obviously, what's interesting is, I guess, about this because it's backstory, and we know there's a fall coming because we've seen in the tavern he can't do his magic anymore, and he's having some issues. So we know something. There's a fall coming. Yeah, uh-huh. but I still don't. One thing he doesn't have a weakness, and that's that's could, starting to bother me a little bit. No, he does. First of all, he's the fantasy hero. And he does have a weakness. It would probably be his pride. Uh, possibly. But so far, he hasn't failed at anything, really. Yes, he has. He's totally got kicked out of the mayor's house. He totally bungles that, even though he, even though he um, uh, saves see, the that world. that's his fault. That's not, yeah, that's not his. That's, he's failed, but he's never failed because of his own failing. He's not of his mm, skill. That's true. Like, that's what's true. awesome about Dresden, right? When you read Dresden, you know from a third-party perspective, Dresden looks like a kick-butt awesome wizard. But from Dresden's perspective, he's constantly trying to figure out how the heck you know, he, does, he doesn't feel like he's unstoppable. Hmm. Quoth almost is arrogant, but, he's, but what's, what's funny about his arrogance is it's not really arrogance. You know, it's almost like it's not bragging if you can do it. He can always do it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting nervous. Well, he's a genius. He's and a I'm, prodigy. Well, I don't, and I understand that, but I'm just getting nervous that how long... Can I buy into that character? Do you know what I mean? Like but see, I think it works something. to cycle back to the writing style. Since the story is about him told by him, mm-hmm. the, only, the, the only fall we're going to see is what Kavol thinks his fall is or thinks what his weaknesses are. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's interesting. That's an interesting. Because he's very humble about his, he's like, I'm not this great wizard that you all think I am. And yes, I've, I've been with Fair Lurian and, and all that. But he's not walking around as a braggart. He he somehow we don't quite know why yeah. thinks his life has been uh, not a waste. What's the word I'm looking for, Craig? Um, that he hasn't really done anything to change humanity, really. Uh, I didn't get that impression. No? I mean, I don't. I I'm not. I don't think I share the full measure of Russ's concern with that element. But I did get that. I did get shades of that in the Falurian element, and then in the in the Adem sect. I I I liked the Adem. I liked I I I really thought they were mm-hmm. well constructed and that part of the book was 
was interesting, I guess. But to me, it was like, okay, uh, I've had enough of these side... I guess where I differ from Russ is I actually enjoy the university parts. Well, there you go. And uh, I and I wanted him to get back there because I wanted to see how all those other characters were doing and how his friends were doing. And you know what I'm fascinated like? with his relationship with his 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 love interest Denna, who was like yeah, we haven't know, even touched on her. Basically, a kept woman. Well, she's we'll have to save that but, for another time. Yeah, you huh? know what I'm nervous about too, Craig. And this is sort of interesting. You just made me think of this. You know, it's almost like. Okay, the university part, here's him, here's him learning magic. Okay, here's the Florin part, here's him learning sex. Oh, here's the dumb part, here's him learning a sword. Right. Like, are we going to have these little, like, they just reboot the... Right, it became episodic. Because if you think of the Adem situation, it was really like him going to the university all over again. Right. Really. It's really know? interesting. I don't know if we can end on this note necessarily. Russ might have a thought back. But, again, I would categorize that. Uh, I never thought of that categorization now that you say it to me i can see it but i'm like oh russ is categorizing it here's where he learns the sword here's where he learns yeah, the but sex. that's pretty much how it's constructed but that's yeah. me except for when he was with the mayor i never that was all interesting and intriguing that was and the good part totally too. different right. to me i never categorized it into oh now he learns that i'm like oh this is the part of the story that happens next it to me it was just all part of his journey and yes it's contrived i get that but but i'm like well i'm reading about a hero so i'm gonna hear about his Right, and I think there's also certain. I mean, we have to keep in mind that this is supposed to be a hero. He's supposed right. to be larger than life. No, I'm still. And so, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm loving it. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I get you. In a book I club, we got to be critical. So I, I've seen. I you. you know, there's, there's issues, yeah. I, and I, that's what I'm nervous about for the third book. And, and I and I guess it's a trilogy, right? So in the third book, right. we should see conclusion, and hopefully, he's done training now because he's pretty much learned what he needs to learn close to it, right? Except for some mastery right. level stuff. He, we already know he's pulled the win a few times, right? With Florian. Mm-hmm, yep. Yep. He's got his swordsmanship down, so yep. he, can, he can obviously bet any woman and make her want more. So he's good to go. He, what else does a hero need, right? <laughs> right. That's true. So there we go. But Let's yet go. he can't seem to do it all with who it matters, not with the girl he seems to love. He gets his butt kicked in the bar, <laughs> in his own bar. Well, that's right. after but, the well, fall, I think though. The, See, I think the actual climax of this book isn't going to be in the past right i agree I think really. we're headed towards something that's coming after him in yep. the present we're going to see yes. the result of his mistake he made in uh, when he was a hero he's going to make some kind of yes, call, yes. Uh, in his pride and you might be right craig i mean rafe with his his pride being his weakness in his pride he will think he's doing the right thing cause some big error yeah and that'll be the downfall of 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 why there's all this conscription going on and there's war in the land he's going to cause all that and uh, and and be and be bashful and 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 feel bad about it. Yeah. Right. Is he going right. to die? That's my question. Because the tree said he was. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, we'll have to read a third one to find out. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll definitely come back to the book club. Never down wrong. the readers' lounge. So please let us know what you thought of this because this is an experiment. So let us know what you think. As always. <laughs> And apparently, the reading room stays open later than Dunganona. So, <laughs> congratulations yes. oh. for this supersized <laughs> lost chapter. Right. right. Almost as long as one of these books. <laughs> Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show with help us sit I don't mind the bullets, the bombs, or the blood. I don't want money, and I don't need medals. But what I do want is for you to stand there in that black t-shirt and listen to the D6 generation.